Hey everyone, this is Tom from Montac here doing the weekly Montac matchup for the 3rd of June 2022. Joining me this evening, we are going to have Apocalyptic here all the way from Romania. Apocalyptic is going to be in the preliminaries for the June 2022 tournament. How are you doing, sir? Yo, oh, hello. Thank you for having me again. Well, I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I am getting along as always. Oh, and I forgot to mention <laughs> my apologies. I should never forget this. He is former champion as well. Should uh, never okay. forget that potential. <laughs> I do apologize, sir. But we have quite a few very interesting matchups. Obviously, block A and block B are looking quite competitive. And uh, starting us right off on the bat, we've got Crimson Deceit taking on Shadow Galaxy Wolf. Prediction for Crimson is Vigilantes, and Wolf would be predicted to use potentially a Pug deck, or she may switch back to Tarotians. Um, it's really a tale of a lot of talent coming from Crimson Deceit. Obviously, they just won the Rookie yeah. of the Season, and yeah, Shadow yeah, yeah. Galaxy Wolf obviously is a major veteran who knows a lot more about competitive uh, Montac. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Well, I do have some experience with Shadow, not so much with Crimson, I don't know if we ever versed each other, but I don't remember. I don't so. But like you said, Crimson, Crimson did win the Rookie of the Season and he did have a pretty impressive record for a Rookie. Mm. Vigilantes are a very good deck, to be honest. Um, I don't really know who is going to win, like, I, I'm gonna be honest, I tossed a coin and Crimson won the, to the coin toss. So I'm gonna go with Crimson on winning. And now that I think that Shadow might use a Pug deck, mm -hmm. it's interesting. I think that Pugs kind of die to Vigilantes because of the specialty removal. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my pick will be Crimson. Interesting. It is, it is a pretty close one. It should be very interesting. And the winner of that yeah. to face Dan, so... <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the next matchup we got is Misfire versus Darmacos. Obviously, Misfire, three-time former champion. Uh, they've done pretty well, actually. They re they went through, they're kind of done with their full-on Angel stage, and they're starting to get a mm -hmm. bit more back to where they were as the Enigma. And they're going to be taking on Darmacos, who is still relatively new. Um, not a lot of experience inside the top 10 competitively, but they have gotten OTK wins with their Bandit deck. So they do know mm -hmm. how to get it done. Misfire definitely cannot afford to brick here, otherwise it could be over very, very yeah. quickly. A major first match for Misfire to really prove he's got what it takes to not only make it to the grand final, but actually win the whole thing entirely. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, I, I also think that Misfire will win just because that Dragon Angel deck is very powerful, like you said, the Beowulf and the Dragon Apex. Mm. Um, and he also is just a veteran player with a lot of experience and a lot of accolades under his belt. Mm -hmm. I think Misfire will take this one, yeah. Fair enough. I'm sure Misfire will have a couple surprises for us, no doubt. Uh, sure. And they'll be taking on Doozy after that, so that'll be... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if there's going to be an upset in this tournament, that is highly... Uh, that is an interesting one to look at. <laughs> um, next matchup we got is Weistein versus Tamus. Definitely, probably uh, one of, if not the most hard to call match. Based on Weistein yeah. obviously being two time former champion, they're using a very meta deck in Vigilantes. They really did make Vigilantes, them and Crimson really made Vigilantes meta. And Tamus, yeah. of course, is sticking, I would guess, with Sky Bandits. It's a huge match because I don't I don't believe Weistein's going to take Tamus seriously enough to really really dissect the deck that Tamus has put together based okay. on the fact that obviously the the big elephant in the room Tamus has never been champion um obviously they've been active sporadically but that's still something that's going to be in the back of Zweistein's mind it may be a reason they don't take him as seriously mm -hmm. which could be a huge detriment and could see Zweistein out of the tournament right off the bat um what are your thoughts on this matchup I think it's a very interesting one uh like you said, I kind of have the same idea. I think that Temus could like surprise Zvi with something and Zvi doesn't take him that seriously and then... I mean, it would be very funny if Temus pulls some kind of FTK because Zvi hates FTKs with passion <laughs> and that would be very funny. Okay. Uh, I am 
<laughs> I am leaning more towards Vine though to win. Just because he is a very good player and with a very good deck. It's okay, I think that's why we win. Unless he gets like very lucky, unlucky in some ways, and like, I don't know, Bricks doesn't draw mm. the cards he needs, has bad luck with the class roll, mm. that could also be a, a factor. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. I, I think Zvi will win this film. Alright, well let's stop mucking around. Let's get to the final match. The most important match of the week. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You've got Charging Badger's Obviously. opponent. <laughs> Round one, preliminary, right off the bat, two-time former champion Badger, obviously, is starting to rise up the ranks once again. And now you're yeah. going to face them. Round one, obviously, Badger, Sky Soldiers, of course. Sky they have, Soldiers, They have yeah. dipped a little bit into the set five Sky Soldiers, but not a huge amount. Um, you yourself have quite an interesting deck previously seen. You've got a lot of options. Um, I, oh, you've been yes. a, major, a major fan of Eclipse Troopers recently, and they've actually done a couple of plays even experimenting with steel edge obviously rogue dragons is always an option don't do rogue impact again um, <laughs> <laughs> that, oh. <laughs> that was uh no no uh, no um yeah. but <laughs> you've got quite a few very interesting and specifically control orientated decks um does a set five sky soldiers worry you i believe it's soldiers honor and the quetzal synergy is that really something like that's a concern for you or is it more just the same game plan heading into this one I think his Badger is very, very interesting. Mm. We did verse in the past a couple of times, I do believe. Mm. And I think he beat my ass every time. Uh, <laughs> I, feel, um, I feel like you've beaten him at least once. I think you have. I'm uh, pretty sure you did beat him uh, at least once. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure you beat him at least once. Actually, yes, you did. You OTK'd him with Starlet. That was, I think, the first true, person you were OTK true, with Starlet. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. A Templar yeah. straight through the head. You are right. <laughs> you are right. So I'm going to play Starlet <laughs> FTK in this match. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's very interesting. I am pretty confident just because I believe in the deck I'm going to bring and I know which deck it is. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll have fun. That's what's important here those were the matches uh thank you for giving your thoughts but we've got something else to announce as well we, we have something very exciting uh, very very exciting we are currently working on the new omen cat archetype and uh i think apocalyptic you got a couple more things to add to it it's an archetype that both me and apocalyptic are working on with uh well let me just let him uh start on that tell us a little bit more about the archetype will you sir? well yes of course this archetype i think will bring something very new, something very exciting to the Montag TCG, a very new perspective, I can say. Uh, the main thing with this archetype, we want to give art input to the community. The community sh will uh, get a chance to design the artwork itself, mm. uh, not necessarily draw it, just give input. I will be doing all of the drawing. Uh, we are hoping to have this done by set 7. Can you give us a timeline on that? Set 7, I believe, is going to be viewable, like actually seen in the market yes. at the end of the March tournament, but released next year in the uh, October after the September tournament. That does not mean that players can't get it early through the market, of course. Exactly. Um, but we are, I th I'm really excited from the... We've had a couple more testings. We're testing with the templates, um, and the art looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, well, tell, about you, that, tell them about that Tell uh, about that. extra little thing that's going to be a little bit different about how you're going to play this archetype a little uh, bit more. Well, we are thinking about making this archetype having an alternative win condition. And I don't know if I can give too much away, but it would be very exciting, very, like I said, a very new way to play the, the Montag TCG. Yeah, it's going to be... I'm really excited, I think... If everything goes according to plan, it's actually going to have this specific card we're thinking of. We'll have the shortest text in Montac. Exactly, yeah. And amazing. It is, yeah. I think if you get what we're talking about, it is going to be pretty nuts. Um, obviously, I think, what's the theme we're going for currently, uh, Mr. Apocalyptic? Well, how do I say that? Like on Legends? Yeah, folklore? like myth. Yeah, folklore. Myths? Group, yeah, group exactly. Group. Yeah. So basically that can be anything. We can have scary creatures that want to 
attack or we can have like knights in shining armor and small little cuddly ones and we can have anything basically yeah the theming is infinite yeah yeah as, so the idea is obviously is you know and uh we developed the law and it should be incredibly exciting i'm really keen uh, based on the current strategies we're working up, I think it's going to be uh, a really nice archetype to look into and explore. Yes. And a yes. bit of a bit of a palate cleanser compared to what you're used to uh, when playing competitively. All right then. Uh, well, thank you, sir, for coming on and giving your thoughts and giving thank us a little, you bit for of, uh, me. little bit of information about the almond cats. Uh, I can't yeah. wait. You can't wait. Uh, Thank you everyone for watching. Everybody get excited. Everybody excited. Thank you everyone for watching. Exactly. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell. You know the whole stuff. Uh, hope you all have a great week. And uh, this has been Tom. Bye.